But uh, they they only got one commit in the class of 2024, Derek. We've talked about maybe only one other guy that they could add. Uh, but I do want to bring up a name we haven't talked about a lot. That's Mikey Lewis, a guard that Illinois has been involved with for a while. Just got a Kansas offer. Seems to be having a pretty good summer. Yeah, I mean, he was one of the top scorers in the UIBL throughout the spring. Uh, his team didn't make it to Peach Jam, so he's kind of playing in the – they call it now the PIT, uh, <laughs> playing off the good. NIT. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he can, he's a bucket. Like he's a three level scorer, uh, a guy that shoots it well, uh, from the outside can, can play in the mid range and pull up and, and also get to the rim. He was on, uh, the Oakland soldiers. So he's out there on the West coast. And, um, and when I got in early in the spring, it, it was kind of a, a later blooming recruitment. I think the only official he's taken so far, he went to St. Mary's, uh, San Diego state's been in there. He, he's got a couple of like Arizona state, uh, UNLV, uh, some of those type of, of of players in his recruitment. Uh, but yeah, Kansas jumping in. I know in the past, like there's been some blue bloods who have, have thrown out an offer in July after a big peach jam or, uh, and, and you still don't know if they're really going to push. Like I know that like EJ Liddell got a Duke offer at one point. Yeah. And Duke didn't really, didn't ultimately become a big player. So we'll see what that looks like, but that, that shows the type of, of AAU season that he's had to command that type of interest. Um, Chester Frazier's recruited him hard. Uh, he's talked about taking a visit to Illinois at some point. But, uh, yeah, in terms of a combo guard that can score it, obviously you have that in Dre Gibbs Lawhorn, but you can never really have enough uh, guard depth, uh, capable ball handlers, shooting. Shooting is still something that Illinois wants more of, and, and he's definitely one of those too. I mean, I think he was shooting 40% from three throughout the, the bulk of the AAU season. So uh, he's really good. He's really good. We, we've talked about Jason Jackson out of Yorkville. Uh, I think you got another look at him. Derek, what'd you think? I thought he had a pretty good weekend. Uh, I know that kind of on the front end, he he definitely was impressive. And then you got into some of the bracket play and uh, th there's going to be times where you're just going to face better teams, but they, they got, they got blown out in, in bracket play in one of those games and he didn't do a whole lot. Um, he's a long-term prospect. He's a long-term guy. Uh, his lack of strength still hurts him at times um, in terms of rebounding or just guarding guys that, that kind of really want to bully through him. And uh, I, I just like his skill set. As you look uh, offensively, 6'10", can handle it on the perimeter some, can shoot it. I, I like his his stroke looks pretty good. Uh, and the more I hear, I, Brad, I, I think Brad views him as Coleman Hawkins-esque. Like I, I think he – there's some differences there. I think Coleman, more dynamic ball handler – uh, better playmaker in terms of just getting guys involved. But uh, Jackson might be a better shooter than Coleman was at this stage in time. And uh, I mean, uh, someone to potentially take a redshirt year, just take some time to develop, you, you get him in the mix with Merez and, and Imani. And I just think there's a nice compliment there that uh, some people have been skeptical. I, I listened to what Joe Hendrickson said. I'm not trying to put words in his mouth. I know he said that you know, he's viewed him as a mid-major prospect and that's kind of just been his, that's his offers, offer list. That's uh, who he's been uh, throughout this spring, but uh, Illinois has done a good job of, of recruiting him. I think they like him a lot yeah. and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they ultimately try to push for him uh, sooner than later. Cause it, they just like the, the long-term potential. And let's be honest, like you can only play eight, nine guys. And how many guys nowadays are happy to, redshirt to learn and develop for a couple of years. So I, I know Brandon Lieb didn't work out. And some of these other guys haven't worked out, we'll see if Nico Moretti, what, what happens with him. They, they hoped Zachary Perrin could be that kind of guy. Obviously that didn't last very long, but if you can get a couple of guys bought into development, see where they are in a couple of years and then figure it out. Uh, and, and if Jax just is happy with that, rather than go to a mid major where he might be able to play a little bit earlier, um, you know, there's, there's some value in that. There's some value in, in guys that are willing to put in that work uh, and see what they become, um, especially with an in-state kid. I think that makes uh, some sense. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple months with him. I failed to bring this guy up last time right after he took a visit to campus. So apologies for that, Derek. But Jeremiah Fears also had a good week, it sounds like, uh, during this past week of the AAU circuit. And Illinois seems to have really turned up its interest. We know the history with the Fierces. Uh, they they really pushed hard for a while for Jeremy, and then right as it seemed to be coming to a, a climax there where Illinois could get him, Illinois seemed to back off. He becomes a McDonald's All-American, and he's going to, to Michigan State. 
but now Illinois turning it up for Jeremiah Fears. So one, let's start here. What did you see from Jeremiah Fears uh, this past week? I love him. First chance I got to see him at Peach Jam, and I, I saw him a little bit uh, during the spring. He's just so skilled offensively. Right? There, there's really nothing he can't do uh, in terms of his shot making. I mean, he can make shots from all over the court, uh, outside the perimeter, off the bounce in the mid range. Uh, he doesn't need to get stronger. I mean, that's something that as you try to go into contact and play uh, on drives around the rim, there, there's some contested finishes that he can get better at. Uh, as he gets more physically mature. And the, the thing to me that uh, I've continued to keep in mind is like, he's a 16 year old playing up 17 U. like he's playing as a starting point guard on Brad Beal elite on a peach jam team up a level. Like I, I in the past, there have been a select guy, a number of guys that have, have played up like that. Like Jalen Brunson's one that comes to mind. And then there's uh, a few other ones that uh, when they play 16 on 17s and they come back the next year, like they usually just kill it. And I think that that's something that's probably very much in the cards for him. His production overall, like there was a game against the Wrens. I've talked about uh, Dylan Harper. Uh, they've got another guard that's that's pretty darn good that he struggled. Like he went like two for 15 from the field and uh, just had an off game. And, and there's been some of that for him throughout the spring and summer is that uh, a little bit of fluctuation in his production. But uh, when he's had good games, he's, he's definitely looked apart and, um, I know you're going to bring this up, and it, it makes a lot of sense. I heard you say it yesterday. Like the Steph Curry generation, definitely very much involved with him. Uh, I know he's – like he played with Jer Jeremy last year at Joliet, and he was kind of just more of a scorer where Jeremy's that pass first point guard. And you wondered, like, is he going to be just a, a combo guard that maybe needs to grow a little bit more to kind of be that off-ball shooter, mm -hmm. or is he a pure point guard? I, I think he's developed really well as a playmaker. I think his passing is is pretty impressive. Uh, he still has time to d develop and everything, but um, he, he's he's a legit top 50 chance to be a top 30, top 25 type of guy, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I failed to mention 2025. Uh, Jeremiah Fears played Joliet last year, now heading to Compass Prep. Um, a lot of these guys going to these prep schools. He's the, he's the kind of lead guard you build around. Right, like that, to me, I, I've seen him a couple times, and, and I see that kind of stuffness in his game. Not saying he's that good, but um, he can score, he can distribute. Uh, you put him around Marez Johnson and, and Amani Hansberry and, and whatever else you have. Need a lot of shooting, Derek. Maybe a Phoenix <laughs> Gill. Yeah, maybe a Phoenix Gill. Like that's that's the kind of guy who I think is probably a sophomore could, could lead your team in scoring, could play a lot as a freshman and be an impact player right away. So uh, what do you make of their traction, Derek, with this recruitment, give, given their history with Jeremy um, and, and given what they can sell to him? I think the sell is strong. I think that a lot of what the family bought into with Jeremy applies to Jeremiah and that he can stay close to home. And I know that matters to, to Jeremy Fierce Sr. because he's got uh, a number of sons. I mean, this is going to be the middle one, Jeremy, the oldest, and he's got another one um, younger than Jeremiah uh, to to stay in, in the area and watch him play hoops. And uh, when I talked to him last month, I mean, he was talking about how excited he was to be in the Midwest and, and know, well, uh, Jeremiah is going to go out to Compass Prep. They're not moving out there. They're not relocating. They want to stay in the Midwest. He can't wait to get out to all the Big Ten venues and see Jeremy. So that was a big reason why uh, Illinois was – a huge factor, uh, Michigan State as well, because um, staying close to home matters. I think it matters to Jeremiah as well. And um, he's talked about legacy. He's talked about, hey, look how Io was received, uh, promoted, the stage that he had, just uh, and the, the lasting legacy that that Io had, that, that D Brown had, uh, a guy like Frank Williams had. I think I think it's something that really plays um, with that family. Um, in, in the end, is it going to matter that Illinois turned away? his older brother uh, essentially, or, or let off the gas, his older brother. I, I still have that thought personally. I wonder uh, yeah. if that's something that when it comes down to it, is that going to be anything that is a detractor, but uh, Illinois definitely is turning it up. Um, I think they wondered for a while, was it worth it? Was it worth it based on the ending of the other recruitment to, to make that kind of effort? They decided it is. Uh, Jeremiah is definitely talented enough, whether you just to, to give it a shot, um, and then also the other factor is like, there's so many other options. Like he's has a chance to really have his choice of pretty much anywhere in the country. Um, Arizona offered this spring, Michigan, Michigan state, uh, Kentucky's involved and he's going to visit there sometime soon. 
So we'll see that there's still a ways to go, but um, I think Illinois has, has gotten good feedback recently. I think they, they pressed it really hard. They made sure to be at all of his games. Brad was at a lot of his games and uh, they want him to feel like he's a huge priority. If not, maybe even the, the top guy in 25 for them right now. Any other nuggets from the weekend, Eric? I saw a handful of, of other guys. Um, I know, you know, Larry Johnson is a, a, a big guard that they're looking at. Uh, had really not been grandma a nice Ma, not grandma Ma, Larry Johnson. No, he was impressive. Yeah, he was, he was a, a big time player, but uh, a six four guard from uh, he's playing team Thad. Um, didn't do a whole lot. I, I think that that's uh, it wasn't really a, a big standout weekend for him. So he's kind of a late bloomer. He got an offer from Illinois. A handful of other guys uh, there in June, and um, they're, they're looking for that that combo guard. I think as it stands right now, Marez. I think Jaxus is there. They want a, a stretch, stretch the floor, big man, even if it is kind of a longer term piece. I think Jaxus is their focus right now. Uh, Jackson McAndrew is a, a talented shooter from Minnesota that's got size, but I just don't think Illinois is is really entrenched there. They kind of relate to the party. So I think Jaxus is, is their focus. And then beyond that, it's probably combo guard slash wing, maybe best available in that group uh, in terms of adding another guy. Uh, Jaden Glover is one they really like out of New York. Um, I think it's tough because now that Rick Patino's at St. John's, he's got a lot more appeal and, and, and they're pretty strong there right now. But um, it's interesting because uh, Glover makes the transition from, he played uh, New York Jayhawks, which was Andre Curbelo's AAU team to then playing for the Riverside Hawks, which is run by uh, Kofi's mentor. So mm. um, uh, maybe you, you kind of raise your eyebrow a little bit and say, Hey, does Illinois have a little bit more juice in that one now? Um, we'll see. We'll see. I think they're they're playing catch up. Uh, maybe he's going to be a Big East land, but he's a good shooter uh, and a guy they've been recruiting for a while. Um, Michael Robinson, too, is, is a guy I got to see at Adidas. Um, he's mentioned that he wants to visit Illinois. Oak Hill Academy uh, player that uh, Chester's recruited. Uh, kind of a, a three slash four. Uh, decent athlete. Uh, can shoot a little bit. And he's someone that they're they're looking at and, and involved with probably not gonna be a big class but um that's kind of what you're looking at in 24. 